started uh, with last uh, mayor, Lord Austin, have a prayer. Have a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for all the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. Dear Father, we give you thanks for the seasons and we know, dear Father, that you prepare ahead of us a time of renewal and springtime and we ask, dear Father, that you'd help keep that hope alive in our hearts. Dear Father, again this morning we pray especially for the family of Joe Parker, our dear friend uh, who lost his battle with cancer last week and for all the good things that he did in this community and for the things he'll be remembered. We also pray for the family of Colby Rutledge and for his wife and children uh, after Colby's sudden death last Friday. We ask that you would uh, protect those men and women who protect our country and our freedoms all around the world, here and all around the world. We also ask your Father for your blessings, for your wisdom and your guidance and all the things that we do. We ask for your continued blessings on this country and our leaders, and we ask that you would be with each of us as we go about our daily business and help us to be a reflection of you. I pray for peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I already talked about this. I apologize for being late to the water board meeting, but uh, Vernon Collette is in ICU at Kenstone with uh, blood clots in his legs and in his uh, lungs. So if you would, keep him in your prayers. Thank you, Thank you David, for that. Uh, we recognize our elected officials this morning. Hey, Mr. Pomel, how you doing? Anybody else? Before we get started, I'm going to introduce you to our new uh, board member, Mayor Phil Yaw. And Mayor, why don't you just tell us a little bit about you just real quick before we get started. Well, all I've got to say is it won't take very long. Uh, my name is Teresa Phil Yaw. <laughs> I live in Hiram. I'm the mayor of Hiram. And uh, Collin County is my home, and I always has been. And I am honored to represent the people on the Air Force Building. And just pray for me to do, make the right choice. You betcha. And uh, looking forward to serving with you. Uh, Jason Phillips is going to explain why Tom is not here and why Kerry is uh, still on the board with us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Cable's not here. He has a special call board of education meeting this morning, uh, dealing with some issues they've not been able to get to. So he asked me to step in this morning. I'm glad to be here with y'all. And uh, just to go over some issues regarding board membership here. Uh, we've got uh, Kerry Tidmore, who is still with us, just to let you know. This board is made up of the IBA plus three appointees <coughs> to the airport authority. Two members of the IBA, I believe Mr. Bazelli and Mr. Ship, their terms expired uh, on December 31st, uh, 2015. So by virtue of the enabling legislation there, those folks are not here today because their terms have expired. Uh, Mr. Tidmore is here with us today because he is an appointee to the airport authority specifically, and the enabling legislation for Mr. Tidmore's position says that he will serve a term of X, X number of years, uh, and that he will continue to serve once his term expires until his successor is appointed. In his case, no successor has been appointed, so he remains in office uh, serving this board. So hopefully that resolves any questions about that. Well, I just hope the county's wise enough to keep Kerry on there, because he's a bad asset to us and his board and the county. He's, a, he's, a, he's just a blessing to me, too, and his knowledge of aviation not be touched. So we just hope that that goes your way, as long as you're willing to serve. You bet. All right. Uh, let's move on to the next agenda item, elected officers, 2016. All right, so we got the chairman, the vice chairman, the secretary. All right. I don't have any. Move to nominate Calvin Thompson as chair. I second. All in favor? I 
I would go ahead and approve it just uh, just to be on the safe side. Uh, I need a nomination of the director and secretary. Well, if secretary. anybody else wants that position, I'm glad to entertain it. I'm going to reappoint Blood Swap it as the secretary and the director. Second. All right. Now, Tom, cancel. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, Council, Tom Cable, with a uh, wonderful audio announcer. You don't have to. It's uh, We haven't done it in a long time. I don't know if it's, it's a bad idea, but you certainly don't have to. Well, I think it's made on up and up. I move to, to retain Tom Council. Tom Cable as Council for the Air Force Department. Second. All in favor? Aye. Alrighty, then I want to hear the minutes from last month's meeting, 2016. We got meeting dates first. Oh, the food, man. Yes. Meeting dates. Alright, y'all notice in your uh, information here, we got all the meeting dates already. Ronnie, well, you don't talk to the game, Joe. good. <coughs> um, for the next year. And to hear them today, has anybody got any problem with approving this? So, all in favor? No. All right, now. I guess I'd, I'd make a note that uh, on the meeting dates, it says at the top that they're at 9 a.m., but it doesn't say on the individual dates that they're at 9 a.m. I think it's clear, but just yeah. to make sure. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll uh, make that part of my motion. Construction in progress at 2.9 million. What exactly what is that, Blake? Um, Chuck's here, so make sure you that I'm giving a correct answer. But I believe that the construction in progress is, is the taxiway project. We did the taxiway widening, which is what we this is going back two years now, but we did the bond, the 3.6 million dollar bond to do the taxiway widening and the 500 foot taxiway extension. If you'll recall, we got the widening done, but we didn't get the extension done. So we're not finished with that project. That project got halted by FAA, so it's you know 80% done, but we still have to finish out that last 500 feet of construction. So that, that would be the construction that's in progress is the part that we've already completed out of the $3.6 million overall project that we're working on. So that's the completed portion? Yes, sir. <coughs> Jeff, can you confirm me on that? That's, that's the case also. That gets adjusted each year once the, uh, the audit is completed through the independent auditor and they make those adjustments on it and you not receive the uh, audit back yet. And also under other assets, we were going to, I believe we stated in December, we were going to uh, take that air show fund in the fall since it was not a good receivable. $27,000. Yes, sir. And where's that motor going to, to go ahead and expense that? If it is, then we can do it. But it needed, to, as far as I knew, it needed to be voted on and approved as an expense to go ahead and get it off of here. And, and do that. You're correct. We did talk about taking it off of here and going ahead and, and doing away with it. Um, we should have added that to the agenda. So if you want to make a motion to you know, add that to the agenda, then we can go ahead and do that today. I make a motion that we uh, add that to the agenda to remove that from uh, other assets, air show funding. I'll second. All in favor. And uh, on Blake, down there under uh, current liabilities. Uh, we, we, we added it. Now we got a We got a vote. Now we got a vote. Yeah. yeah, we've got, uh, just, just to clarify, we've added that to the agenda. We are on approval of the financial statement. So, yeah, that would be one of add that before approval of the financial statement that would be accurate. 
So that's now on the agenda for discussion. So, so you can either go ahead and accept the nomination to uh, approve that as a as a final expenditure. All right. You back on do it. So moved. All in favor. We need uh, a second. We need a second. I'm oh, sorry. Second. <laughs> second. Okay. Discussion and vote. Yeah, we'll need discussion and vote. Yeah. Uh, look, I had one more question whenever it's appropriate. Uh, why don't you explain that twenty-seven thousand dollars exactly where it went to? I'll be honest with you, Kevin. We'd have to pull a financial report to give you a dollar by dollar on that. I, I can't. Off the top of my head, I, I couldn't do that for you. Um, I can I can have Chuck pull that when he gets back to the office and email it to each one of you. But uh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what what each one of those dollars was spent on. In general, it is from the first air show where right. funds were actually paid for expenses that were not reimbursed, and it was hopeful that the air show would have made the money to pay it back. That's what. So I can get you the details. <coughs> Would you call it? This has been on the books for a long time. It's something we we were hoping that at some point in time, of course, the air show would, would make enough money to, to reimburse it. But uh, Ellis is right. It's been <coughs> too long for me to go ahead and, yeah. and take care of it. It seems to me like it was a smaller amount at one time, and that something's been added to it. I, I would assume that what we paid the school system on the buses this year got added to it. I think that's what the, I think that's the, uh, <coughs> exactly what it is. Right. So I was thinking the board's like $12,000 or something. Right. So yeah, it would, would certainly have been appropriate for the, what we paid for the school buses to have been added to. Uh, I have one other question where it is. Yeah, I'm going to take care of this vote and then, then go back to the question on the financial. Okay. Are we set a question on we, that? We have enough information to take a vote on this, or do we need a motion to potentially table this until we get the details on what exactly the dollars are? Well, we know it's a receivable from the uh, airshow fund. We're not going to get paid back for it, so we might as well go ahead and remove it. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay. okay, there's a motion on there for the, to remove this off our financial statement from assets, so just a second. There was a second. Yeah, was okay, okay. all in favor. Uh, all right. Anybody else got any more questions about the financial statement? I got one more. Under, the lake under current liability is accounts payable at $138,000. What all does that consist of? Is that, is that due now? Uh, let me find it. $138,901.74. That is also due to adjustments by the last audit that was done. We've been, we've been tracking this as a cash basis. What the accountant was doing was taking a look at expenses that were actually paid at the end or in, in the beginning of that the previous fiscal year that uh, were actually owed or paid in that. So they adjusted it into the accounts payroll and needs to be adjusted back out when they do their uh, when they complete the audit. Else, what I think this was is it was the total amount of contract obligation that we had at the end of the fiscal year. So at the end of the fiscal year, when they do the audit, they take the total amount of contractual obligation that you've got outstanding, and they put it into account payable. But it's not actually paid until the work is done. So that at the end of this audit, which we just finished the audit, but we don't have the adjustments to the books yet from the audit. So when they give us the adjustments to the books from this audit, that should go away or change if we had if we had a different amount of uh, contractual obligation outstanding at the end of. FY15. So you think it's contractual obligations on contracts out at the airport for work? That, that are outstanding as of June 30th. So at June 30th, when, when the fiscal year ended, they have to take whatever obligation is left at June, on June 30th and they have to list it as an account receivable. So can we follow up on that? Uh, or account payable, I'm sorry. Can we follow up on that at a later meeting and uh, get the exact facts of, of that? We can, and like I said, as soon as we get the adjustments from this year's audits, that number will change. It'll go to whatever we had remaining in, in contracts at the end of, of this past fiscal year. So I, I don't know, Chuck, if you have an estimation on when you're going to get the adjustments to the books. Do you have any idea? I've not heard anything from you on that. Okay. Can, 
can you go ahead and check with them today and see when they think they're going to be able to get us our adjustments? Okay. Dr. Chuck, you say if at one time we was on a cash basis and we switched to an accrual basis, is that? No. Is that what These you stated? These reports are actually run on an accrual basis, but we actually, uh, we are actually operating on a cash basis on the accounting because basically when the bills come in, Yolanda gets them approved, they get forwarded in, they get paid. So if there's outstanding bills, I don't have knowledge of those to put in into their accounts payable. All right. <coughs> Anything else? Yeah. Yeah, and I do. I'm sorry. It's just because I'm not familiar with okay. it. I was looking at some of the payroll and expenditure file out. Like the beef broken out there where part of yours is in the airport and part is in the IBM. It is, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm not sure if that's the way it is. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody got anything else before we we'll talk about it? Get approved. <coughs> we had a motion to approve it, didn't we? I don't I don't think we were. All right. I moved to approve the financial statement as amended. Second. All in favor. Uh, okay, Joe Sharper. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, buddy. I'm uh, going to be going over last year's numbers in comparison to 2014, so just kind of a heads up. Sales were up 24% uh, in 2015 from 2014. We finished 2015 with an estimated 1,500 takeoff, uh, which is up 13%. 1,496 landings, which is up 16%. 1,802 touch and goes, down 5%. And 370 visitors, which was up 15%. We had a total of 5,176 operations in 2015. Now remember, this is an estimated number. This is a number that we, we try to tally up during the day between 8 and 6, uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, but obviously, it's not going to be 100% accurate. We just do the best that we can. Uh, Paul Dean Jet Center is listed number one on the Great Deals page by 36 cents. Uh, that means uh, we're actually listed on the Super Deal page, which means we are the cheapest deal within 150 nautical miles of Paul Dean Jet Center. Uh, we are cheaper uh, than the average by $1.19. Uh, the average for our area is 408 a gallon for Jet A, and we're at uh, 277. I uh, have been in contact with Gulfstream. We will be going through a Gulfstream training class which will certify us uh, in their aircraft. Uh, we do have a current client who flies a G550 who will be a, a regular at our facilities. So, um, Pauline County School District has contacted us in hopes that we will bring back the internship program. We do currently have an intern, Jared Dorton, uh, who is out of Hiram High School. You remember in the past we did have two other interns, Hope Dorsey and Tevin Stevens. Hope is now a freshman at Embry Riddle, and Tevin is a freshman at Auburn, both in the aviation field. So it's nice to see uh, people I've worked with in the past they're pursuing that aviation uh, aviation degree. Uh, they're hoping that we'll bring back the internship program. I've, I've decided that I'm going to, with a maximum of two students. Uh, my my uh, criteria for these students is they have to have a beer better. Uh, grade and they have to have an interest in aviation. And this is a work-based learning program. So, if you have any questions, that's all I have. Oh, I do have one more thing. Uh, last month, December, we proudly hosted the United States Coast Guard. Uh, we are going to become a stop for them, a fuel stop for them. Um, we treated them out to some dinner and uh, welcomed them to our airport. Uh, they came in with an HC-144. I'm sorry, a C-144, which is a cost. That's the second biggest airplane in the Coast Guard inventory. So they are looking to step up the operations uh, with C-130s, Coast Guard, uh, flying from Cape <coughs> Cod down to Miami and back. And so guy got the G, G Wiz jet coming in there. How many times a year is he going? Uh, he, he, has a, he has a couple different jets. Uh, he has a Citation as well as a G550 and a Hawker 800. <coughs> so it's whatever he decides the airplane he's going to get on that day. Uh, go back to your fuel thing a minute. Have you ever got it pepped up to where you can pump it a little faster? No, sir. There's nothing we can do about that. The max we can pump is 47 uh, GPMs, and that is regulated by the uh, dispenser itself. And how many gallons does a G5 take? G5 can take anywhere between three and five thousand gallons. So how?
how long would it take to fill it up with the current system? Last time we pumped 3,500 gallons, it took us 45 minutes. It's not too bad. It is a <coughs> yeah. Well, I guess if you're uh, in a hurry, it's the best bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Joe. Thank thank you. You. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you, you had mentioned that our fuel was far cheaper than anybody else's, mm -hmm. but I noticed that what we had budgeted, 12000 and so far we've only met 34.9% of that. Can, why is it that we're, and, and we're so far into the budget year? Uh, what is it? Um, I, what you're looking at is a fuel flowage fee for every gallon of gas that's pumped on the airport. We receive um, we receive six, 16 cents for every gallon that's pumped. So whatever he sets his price at doesn't affect what we receive as far as fuel flowage is concerned. It's totally independent. But these numbers uh, can be a little skewed because they only order fuel about about eight times a year, seven, eight. Maybe six times a year? Depends. Eight, between eight and ten times a year will work. Right. So, so the fuel comes in in truckloads, so it doesn't come in on a daily or a weekly or even a monthly basis. So these numbers can look skewed. If, if a truck comes in, then a chunk of money comes in. So it, it doesn't come in in, in even increments. So you, so you think that probably by the time July 1, we will have... Well, I know you just had a truckload delivered. I've had... I've, I've topped off both things, so this I've just past had week. Jet A and Air Gas. Right, so those uh, those funds haven't come in yet. Okay. So next I'm month you'll see those numbers will bump up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Joe, that uh, discount of gas, is that JP4 and Air Gas? Uh, it is Jet A and Air Gas. Uh, we're not on the great deals paid for Air Gas um, because the profit margins are, are so, so minimal. I just can't compete with other airports. Okay, Joe. Good luck this next year, buddy. Thank you. Good success to you, buddy. Um, anybody got anything? Ask Joe. <clears throat> uh, let's move on into Blake. All right. Um, I don't have a whole lot today. I just wanted to, uh, I guess, uh, uh, talk just a little bit about the environmental assessment. Uh, everyone knows environmental assessment is done. Uh, we have finished taking comments on the environmental assessment, and. Um, and our, and our consultant is now uh, taking all those, uh, taking all those comments, and, and putting them into categories so that they can be responded to. So uh, they won't respond to, to each individual <coughs> comment. What they'll do is take the comments and, and they'll put them all in in buckets, so to speak, categories. So if they had you know 15 comments about air quality, then they will address that air quality comments. As a whole, as a sum, they want to address, they want to address each one individually. And the other thing that I wanted to share with you today is uh, that is our environmental assessment. That is is what we paid for. And, uh, this is the the document that was produced. Uh, it is uh, about close to the same size as the environmental assessment that we did in 2005 when we constructed the airport. So it's it's very similar. Uh, in size and scope, I guess, to, to what we did in 2005. Um, the comments that we've received um, have, by and large, been, um, you know, pretty, pretty generic, pretty general. A lot of comments saying, I like the airport or I don't like the airport. Uh, those comments, while, while they're fine, there's nothing wrong with them, there's not really a response that, that we will make to a comment of, I like the airport or I don't like the airport because that really doesn't concern the environmental assessment. So the comments that will be responded to are the ones that, that deal with issues that were addressed in the environmental assessment. Um, we did get some of those from the public, but the vast majority of those came from uh, the attorneys. So um, I did bring in Peter Steenlin, Sidley and Austin. I did bring in their comment just so that you could see. Um, this is uh, Sidley Austin's comments. So, these guys got paid about $400,000 to do this. Uh, these guys get paid a whole lot, a lot more than what these guys get paid. So, I don't know what this costs, but it was uh, a tremendous amount of money. Um, 
the reason I, I show this to you is because uh, we have to go through every page of this and determine what in here is actually a valid issue or a valid comment and put it into a category and address it. So this is going to take some time to go through and obviously that was the intent is that they uh, pile up a bunch of paperwork and, uh, and slow down the process so that it takes a while to go through. So, um, and again, this is just Silly Austin. This is not um, this is not any of the other attorneys who, who responded. Uh, we did get comments from, from Paul Hastings. We did get comments from uh, Ken Quinn with uh, Pillsbury. So we do have other comments from other attorneys to address as well. This is just uh, <coughs> Peter Stigman with, with Silly. <coughs> so. Um, they, they'll have to be going through by our consultant. Um, our consultant is the one that has the, the task of going through and, and sorting all these. And once we go through them and sort them and put them into categories, we'll submit it to the FAA and the FAA will review it and the FAA will have the final say so as to whether or not it's been adequately looked at and whether or not we've captured all the appropriate comments or not. So. It's Michael Baker and Associates. Oh, okay. The one that's yeah. okay. yes. And familiar to you, I've been a bit. When you say we, you actually mean the consultant that is hired and paid for, ultimately reimbursed or paid for directly by the FAA according to their requirements and their schedule and everything they do. You've got a very short list of folks that can do that. So. I think when Blake says we, he needs to say we through our consultants and make sure it's understood it's not our staff or us, it's the person to pay and directed by the FAA in the manner that it has to be done. Sure, it, it's, not, it's not our job, it's not the airport's job or the airport authority's job to decide which comments are need to be responded to or what categories they go in or any of that. We don't, we don't deal with any of that, that's all FAA. Uh, the consultant makes the proposal or you know they, they take the first cut at it and submit it to FAA and FAA says yes that looks good or no that doesn't look good or they get directed by FAA and that. But Mr. Baker will be reviewing and he will, he will find, he will turn in his findings and to the FAA. That's well, that's a firm. It's Michael a firm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that there I'm is sorry. a Mr. Mr. Baker. Well, yes. That's crazy. <laughs> there may have been one time. That looks like a couple thousand pages there. It is. Is that 400000 that he charges, is that in his fee to look through all those documents? It, he has time in his estimate to look through the documents. I'm going to be absolutely shocked if they don't come back and, and ask for some, for some additional time. They, they probably will ask for additional time and they'll probably ask for you know, additional payment. Um, I would if, if it were me. Uh, normally you don't, like the original environmental assessment we did, I think there were 30 comments on the original environmental assessment. Uh, none of those were from law firms. So uh, typically you do, this is not the norm. This is not what you would typically expect of an environmental assessment. So um, I would think they would be justified in asking for additional compensation. So that's something that We'll like it from us. What do you think the decision is if they want to further the assessment? You know, the FAA. The FAA. Yes, ma'am. And they'll have the copies of this. They do. Okay. Yes, ma'am. They do. And so. Yeah. Well, I'll jump. Okay. Question for Blake. All righty. There's a motion to go into closed session to discuss personnel and litigation. So moved. To go into closed session for personnel, personnel litigation. Yes, yeah. personnel litigation. Chairman, can we can we add uh, real estate as well, please? And real estate. So there's a motion and a second to go into closed session for those three executive session purposes. That's right. All righty. All in favor. Uh -huh. Session. Move to return to regular session with the note that no action was taken in executive session. Second. All in favor? Uh, all ready. All right, we got a citizen who wishes to speak. I believe it's Kathy Hamm. Come on up, Mr. 
Elvis and Helms. Introduce yourself. Kathy Helms, I live in uh, Rock Park, which is still in Pauling County, in that west corner of Pauling, right this side of Polk. Okay. Um, good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I'm very perplexed as to why members of the Pauling County Airport Authority and others are telling people they'll be able to control the number of commercial passenger flights that can use Pauling Northwest Atlanta Airport. It's my understanding the only limits that can be put on any commercial passenger airport are those for safety. The FAA requires the airport be made available for any passenger carrier that can safely land once part 130. <coughs> We've heard two flights a week, eight flights a week, two flights a day, a million passengers a year. I would like this board to please let the public know the true intent of the number of flights you're anticipating. Much has been said about the extra $850,000 per year, bringing the FAA AIP funds to one million or more. Doesn't the FAA require 10,000 employments per year to be eligible for those funds? Is it also true that million dollars must be used for airport improvements, in essence, to enhance and grow the airport? Isn't it also true that million dollars will not reduce property taxes or directly benefit our school system? AIP funds have very specific uses from FAA.gov. Projects related to airport operations and revenue generating improvements are typically not eligible for funding. Operational costs such as salaries, equipment, and supplies are also not eligible for AIP grants. Additionally, FAA reimbursements for approved projects could go from being 95% funded for a general aviation airport to 75%, or in some cases, maybe 80%. The facts are, these are the minimum number of employments required to receive a million dollars. <throat> no one can limit the number of flights in and out of our airport. Only safety concerns can limit the number of passenger planes. Additional AIP funds will not reduce property taxes or benefit our schools. AIP, AIP funds can only used to be used to improve the airport. Won't the real beneficiary of those AIP funds be a private company, not the taxpayers? Two other airports within an 80 mile radius of Hartsfield Airport have Part 139, but can't attract a carrier, thus putting their AIP funds at risk. Allegiant Air, the carrier that has sent a letter of intent to service our airport, has a history of abandoning airports that do not meet their passenger requirements. Allegiant Air also has a history of maintenance issues. So severe, the COO resigned after only one year, citing training and, and safety concerns. If Part 139 <coughs> is issued and the airport does not meet minimum employment requirements, the airport will still have to be maintained for safety and use by any passenger aircraft that can safely land, even without the million dollars a year. Once that Pandora's box is opened, it can't just be closed. Only the FAA can revoke the Part 139, no matter the desire of this airport authority or the people in the county. FAA money is not free money. All government taxpayer funds come with strings attached. The government does not make money. A tax has to be levied. It is that government entity that controls the facility. It cannot be shut down unless all the FAA grants have been repaid but even still, there's no guarantee that they will ever allow it to return to a general aviation airport. You can't just try it to see if it'll work. The single issue has caused this entire county undue stress and has cost the taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees. Please stop the madness and abandon this pie-in-the-sky dream and return Pauling to the <coughs> people instead of lawyers. Only this board can stop this. The BOC has already withdrawn their support and there are now at least two filings with the courts as to the legitimacy of the Part 139 application. Tell the FAA the people of Pauley deserve better and should always have a voice in what their taxpayer dollars fund, especially one that will have such a profound impact on their quality of life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Prepare for response to all this stuff and bring it back to the next month at our next meeting and respond to those questions you got.
Okay, I, I can do that, but I've tried to write down as much of it as I could, but I couldn't write as fast as what Ms. Hill you leave out, Can you leave your copy of your speech? Sure. Leave it with Blake. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, any questions or comments? Blake, I, I did have a question. I, the General Aviation Air Force, how much did we receive now from the FAA? Uh, is it about 100000 or something like that? It, it's called an entitlement, which is the, what there were, what we, the minimum amount that we receive each year is 150000 Yes. What are we allowed to use those funds for? Uh, we're allowed to use them for, for anything that's called airport improvement program, anything that, that is FAA eligible. So it's, uh, it's things, you know, airport improvements. We can't use them for, uh, you know, a couple of things that Ms. Ms. Helms said are correct. We can't use them to pay employees. Uh, we can't use them off the airport. They have to be used on the airport for, for airport improvements. Now that can be, um, you know, restriping our, our runway. It could be, uh, you know, uh, regrassing the uh, regrassing some areas can be used for. I mean, there's hundreds of different things that we can do with it, but it does have to be used for airport improvements. So, so the 139 certificate is issued, and we do receive the million dollars. Is it, is it the same criteria for it as well? It, it is the same criteria. It still has to meet. Still has to be AIP eligible. So yes, they, they are the same same projects. Now, one thing that we can do with that money is we can get reimbursed for, for monies we've already spent. So, for example, the $3.6 million bond, uh, we can get reimbursed for that. The million dollars we've spent on environmental mitigation, we can get reimbursed for that. So there's a lot of things that we've already spent money on that we could get reimbursed with that million dollars so we'd, we'd be able to repay those bonds quicker and uh, repay the Industrial Building Authority quicker and things like that. Mm -hmm. So obviously there would be, you know, if it was 139 in commercial flights, there would be uh, uh, screeners. There'd be airport screeners there screening uh, people when they... TSA. Yeah, TSA. Does, yes, that, does that come out of that money or is it, do they pay that? No, T TSA has their own funding uh, program uh, where they, uh, the TSA is basically, <clears throat> basically self-funds. Okay. I have a question, please. As Ms. Ham said, like if, if, if you receive the 139 mm -hmm. and then allegiance doesn't work out and there's no no airlines out there at all, now then we have to assume all the responsibility. I mean, the cost of running the airport. I mean, we, do, we have to keep it like the FAA wants it. Well, the cost really is not going to change. I mean, we, we have to maintain the airport no matter what's landing there. It doesn't matter whether it's it's a Cessna 172, you know, single engine airplane, or whether it's a you know an Airbus uh, Airbus 320. We have to maintain the airport, maintain the runway, maintain the striping, maintain the drainage areas. We have to maintain all of it no matter what we do. But they'll still they'll always get the 850,000. It's just that. The additional, no, the, the additional is contingent upon there being 10,000 employments a year. She was 100% okay. correct on that. Okay. And that equates to about two flights a week. So two flights a week gets us the, the minimum 10,000 employments. Okay. So we would receive the... So, the okay, if we, don't, if we don't meet those requirements, though, they can step, the FAA will still offer, really, even though, and we don't get the 850,000, the FAA still, you know, <clears throat> well, the FAA is is always going to have the final say on most of what we do at the airport. The FAA paid to, to build the airport, so I mean, we're they they have. Uh, uh, I mean, pretty much. I mean, obviously, we run it, we operate it, we decide if we want the 139 or don't want the 139. But we have to meet FAA requirements, regulations on on everything that we do. So if we go to restrike the runway. It has to meet FAA requirements. If we go in, uh, you know, anything, hangers, whatever we do, it has to meet FAA requirements. Mr. Chairman, I have one question too. So okay, I'll make it, make it brief. Um, well, I'd like just out of curiosity, going back to the EA just a little bit, you mentioned that a lot of the comments weren't necessarily about the environmental assessment itself, but were more about, um, let's just say, for simplicity, opposed or against. Did you? Did you have any chance to tabulate 
but any fashion opposed against just out of curiosity of course the airport does michael baker did that i mean Mike, michael baker has all of the comments i have some of them i, I don't have all of them but, but michael baker is the entity that's responsible for tabulating all of the comments so so they have every comment that was submitted some of them were submitted to my office, some of them were submitted directly to the FAA, some of them were submitted to Michael Baker's office. But whenever I got a comment in, I automatically forwarded it to Michael Baker. When FAA got them, they forwarded them to Michael Baker. So Michael Baker is, is the entity right now that, that has all of the comments. Okay. Yes. How many opposed? How many they have told me that they got uh, comments that, that either supported the EA or supported commercial service, about 835, and comments opposed were about 50. 835 were for, and 50 were against? Yes, sir. How many of those were opposed? Thank you. That's um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know that. Right. I don't know that. Thank you. That's significant. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just prepare all that flight and we'll bring it back in and just give a four report on Just put it on the agenda out there, please. Line up for you, please, ma'am. And uh, we'll get those questions answered for you. Uh, all righty. Anything else? I move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Yeah, I'll be a meeting. We'll start in.